All right, you guys can see my screen. All right, thank you everyone for joining today and thank you Kimberly for inviting me back to speak. Uh, today I'll be talking about breaking into tech. I'm Christine Fletcher. I'm a UX UI developer and designer at Capspire. Today I wanna to share a little bit about me, my journey into tech and my experience looking for that first developer role. I will also discuss the strategies I used and found effective in finding my dream job. It took me two years of hard work and dedication to learn to code before getting my first role as a software developer. For those of you that don't know my story, before I learned to code, I was a nurse for about 16 years. I was burnt out and wanted to do something where I could use my creativity as well as the problem solving and critical thinking skills I had developed. I quit nursing in October of 2018 and took a couple of months off to really figure out what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. When I rediscovered coding at the age of 39, I thought this really seems to check all my boxes. I did a little HTML and CSS back in the days of my space and would spend hours working on my page. I always thought you had to be one of those super smart people to learn to code though, but it turns out you just need the motivation to learn. I put those doubts to rest and I started reviewing HTML and CSS and learning a little JavaScript with free code camp and YouTube tutorials in January of 2019. I loved every minute of it, but I wanted more structure. So in April of 2019, I started Lambda School and after 18 months of learning, writing, reading, and teaching code, I was endorsed on September 15, 2020. After only three months of job searching, I landed my first role as a developer. One of the most important things I learned early on in Lambda that has nothing to do with coding was to start building my online presence and networking. So why is this important? Well, it makes it easier for people to find you, first of all. It demonstrates your work and your personality. It also gives you a place to build your personal brand and tell your story. It shows that you can write and communicate clearly and effectively. So what artifacts should you have as a developer? Well, definitely a resume. LinkedIn profile. Every position I applied for asked for this. Uh, GitHub personal readme is great with a green activity graph to show that you've been coding on a daily basis. A portfolio is great to display your best projects and tell a little bit about you and show off your personality a bit. It's also a great idea to have a blog or a YouTube channel. It's great for showing you can communicate effectively and gives you a platform to tell your story, which could also lead to speaking events, which gives you great visibility and network opportunities. Most important thing is to put yourself out there. So the job hunt. My strategy during the job hunt was to focus on quality over quantity. I didn't want to apply to hundreds of companies so instead, I focused my search and really took my time during the application process doing research on the companies. I think a huge part of being able to do this with success is networking and building an online presence. Before you begin searching for a job, I want you to spend some time thinking and visualizing about your dream job. Are you working from home or located in some swanky office downtown? Are you working for a huge corporation, a small company, or a startup where you get to wear many hats? What is the company culture like? Laid back and casual or more professional? What values are important to you? Which industries excite you the most? <clears throat> Do you want to work on a team or be more independent? Do you want a full stack, front end or back end position? Do you have any design chops, management skills? Do you want to have a voice when planning projects or just crank out code? Once you have a clear picture of what you're looking for, go find it. I use LinkedIn and ZipRecruiter and a few other job boards to look for companies with positions that interested me. I skimmed the job post looking for the tech stack and qualifications first. Don't shortchange yourself here. If I had one or two things, one or two of the first things listed, I read the entire job description. A good rule of thumb is if you meet at least 70 to 80% of the qualifications, spend some time doing the things that I'm discussing. If you meet only about 50% of the qualifications, still apply, but spend less time doing these activities. 
If the job seemed like a good fit for me, I would visit the company page on LinkedIn and follow them, read a few of their posts, looking for any recent awards, what kind of projects do they build, do they have a blog, and just you know, generally learning about the company. Then I would visit the company website, read their mission, their values, look at every page. What do you like about their site? What do you not like? You could be asked about this in an interview. If you feel, get a feel for the company culture. Does it seem like it aligns with what you're looking for? What does the company do? What kind of projects are they working on? Get a feel for the language and the tone they use. Is it casual, humorous, professional? Take a look on Glassdoor and read reviews from current and past employees. Make sure to tweak your resume and cover letter a bit to include some of their language and highlight things and add or remove things based on the job posting, but of course never lie. It's best to have someone review your resume and cover letter before applying. A lot of times recruiters that work for agencies will help you with this, but you need something to start with. But as for networking, if you are not networking, you're not working. Seriously, it is that important. I spent about 80% of my job search time networking, mainly on LinkedIn. I would also recommend being active in your local tech groups like Techlahoma and any others you find. I would also recommend um, using LinkedIn. With COVID, that's where I focus my efforts. So here you see um, the header page of a company site on LinkedIn. And you can see where you can go follow people, visit their website, and then make sure you click where you see all 303 employees on LinkedIn. You can view everyone that works there and their titles. Go find one to three people where you have something in common with. For me, I would look for female developers and people from a non-traditional background. Also look for people with common interests and a similar position that you're wanting. Take the time to look at their profile. Send a connection request with a message. Maybe start with a compliment or stating something you have in common. You have 300 characters, so make it count. You must put the fear of rejection, rejection to rest. You may message 10 people and only have one or two of them respond, and that's okay. As long as you're consistent, eventually someone will respond. And then nurture that relationship. You never know where it may lead. Maybe friends, maybe a mentor, maybe colleagues. Whatever you do, though, do not ask for a referral unless you have an established relationship. So 85% of people find jobs through networking. So does it make sense that you spend most of your time mass applying to jobs when only 15 to 20% of people are hired that way? It is true what they say. It's not what you know, it's who you know. Could your time be better spent networking with key individuals that will help you connect to a position? I'm not saying to stop applying to jobs, just couple those applications with networking activities. Once you find a position you want to apply to, have done your research, tweaked your resume, then complete the application on the company website, but not from the job board. This at least shows that you visited the company site and not just easy applying to every job you see on a job board and will help you stand out. Follow the directions for applying on the job description. They may want you to email them your resume and cover letter, so pay attention. Print out the job description and highlight keywords and phrases. Use some of those keywords in your resume and any questions on the application. Order your skill section in the same way as the job description, but again, don't lie. Be sure to proofread your answers. A simple grammatical error or misspelled word could cost you an interview. I find Grammarly Chrome extension a great for limiting these mistakes. So LinkedIn and building an online presence. It takes time to grow a network, but I promise you it is worth it. So why LinkedIn? Um, it is a platform built for professionals to network and share knowledge. It has great Google rankings for profiles when your name is Googled, especially if you use your name in the URL. It has amazing organic reach when you use a few relevant hashtags. 
my first blog post was trending with hashtag code, and I only had about 500 connections at that point. LinkedIn makes it easy to stay current on industry news and events, and recruiters often, often use it to find qualified candidates. I like using LinkedIn Job Board because you can just subscribe to notifications, see the number of applicants, and how long the posting has been active. Um, make sure you jump on new postings and those with 25 or less applicants. The best part is being able to see who posted the position because then you can send a connection request with a message like this. So I was able to get several interviews in this way. It was well worth the time. Pretty sure sending this message helped get my foot in the door at Capspire. I interviewed with Megan that day and was hi hired within a week. So where to start? Start with your profile. Make sure you complete every section. Think about how you want to brand yourself and come up with a plan and then carry out that plan through your posts and interactions. Your profile picture should be professional looking headshot. The better photo is where you can show off a bit of your personality and studies do show that people with dogs in their photos are more trusted. I personally like to use photos I've taken while traveling. Um, make sure to edit your profile URL. Uh, whenever you go to your profile, there is a edit public profile link in the top right corner and click there and it's best to make it your name. So again, whenever someone Googles you, they will find your profile. Make your profile as public as you possibly can. Make sure to complete all sections and um, that will help you rank better in search results. Select features that you want to display on your profile. You can um, select featured posts. I usually feature my blog posts and any presentations that I'm given, but you can also feature posts where you've shared a project you're proud of. Your personal brand is the story you tell people about you. Own your story, because if you don't, people will just make it up. Have you Googled your name? If you haven't, you should. Then make sure you try to clean it up a bit. Go to all your social media and clean up your social media, removing anything you wouldn't want your future boss to see. Trust me, they look. So posting on LinkedIn. You don't have to post every day. I usually post once a week or so. Just be consistent. Use three to five relevant hashtags to help reach more people than just your followers. Post about what you're learning, projects you're, you are building, um, any blog or YouTube um, things that you post. Teach somebody something. Provide value. Um, just whatever works for you. And then make sure that you try to respond to all comments on your posts. Um, don't put blocks of text, use emojis and break up text lines, you know, one to three lines so it's easier to read. And make sure if someone interacts with your comment that isn't any first degree connection that you send them a connection request with a message and thanking them for interacting or commenting. Um, comment on other people's posts and start conversations. Join groups and start stretching your networking skills. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Doing all these things will take time, but start now and it will pay off. I remember thinking, how am I gonna build a pro portfolio, write a blog, gain an audience on LinkedIn, develop a GitHub readme, and learn to code. You just do it one bite at a time. I decided it was important and I would schedule a little time every day to network and work on my artifacts. And before you know it, you could have something powerful. You, and you never know where it could lead. I've been invited here to speak with Free Code Camp a couple of times. I recently recorded an interview on the Code Newbie podcast, which hasn't been um, released yet. And I've been asked to speak at the Tech Symposium in March. My boss thinks I'm famous and <laughs> has had their PR people consult me about using LinkedIn. So you just never know what value that employers will find in the things that you share. Um, so yeah, if you'd like to write, start a blog and 
just just do it. So thank you guys for coming and listening today. I hope that you found this helpful and you learned something. Um, and I've provided my contact information there for you. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. All right, thank you, Christine. Um, do we have any questions for Christine in the chat? Uh, let's give them a second, see if we have any coming in. Otherwise, uh, was Patrick next? Yes, sir. Yeah, if you want to get ready. Oh, we have a question from uh, John. Should you post much personal stuff on LinkedIn to show your personality or stick to more professional posts and leave the personal stuff to other social media? For me personally, I try to keep most of my LinkedIn stuff purely professional um, when I'm learning, what I am blogging about that is professional related. Um, I did post that we have a new puppy um, and I do see people that post about their kids and things like that, but I do feel like LinkedIn is more geared towards professional and I would try to keep most of your personal stuff to other platforms. Yeah, I think it really, um, I've, I've definitely seen, you know, people go way outside of, you know, professional content on yes. LinkedIn. Um, for sure. But yeah, I do feel like LinkedIn probably suits the professional stuff more. I keep my not professional stuff over on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, all right. Well, if we have no other questions, uh, Patrick.